Hi, I'm Jacinta Cunahan and this was Coast Community News 5 at 5, May 7. Coming up this week, community land up for grabs across the coast. Debate over inquiry into council gets heated. New council CEO says he's in for the long haul. Tugra Lake's water quality report has been released. And a new play is set to debut tonight at the Art House in Wales. Let's start with David, who has more on the council. Yes, JC, the Central Coast Council has released its list of assets which they plan to sell as part of the solution to solving the financial crisis. The list has been grouped into four categories due to the different legislative and disposal processes involved. Green spaces, car parks, retirement villages, community halls and a series of land blocks or pocket parks are all up for sale. No community consultation was originally scheduled, but this was quickly changed by the council administrator, Dick Person, agreeing with the request for a community feedback process after community outrage, including a protest in Wyong and on the peninsula. Residents now have until the 21st of May to provide feedback by visiting uh, the council's yourvoiceourcoast.com website or visit our newspapers for information on all of this. On Thursday, a motion in State Parliament over the inquiry into the Council's financial woes erupted in a fiery debate between local MPs. Clashes occurred over the judicial inquiry, which was supported by 21,000 locals, and the public inquiry announced by the State Government. Labor says the terms of reference are set in the public inquiry were outrageous attempts to protect the State Government from any scrutiny. Let's have a look at that. Minister. Can you provide the Central Coast community with some strong assurances today by committing that the third term of reference is considered broadly to include the issues I raised uh, specifically earlier? The role of executives and senior managers, the regulatory regimes and the oversight responsibilities of OLG and IPART, the audit office processes, ARIC, amalgamation processes including fit for the future, development of council structure and the internal restructuring and contracts. For Labor members to claim that a public inquiry is a toothless tiger is utter rubbish, Madam Deputy Speaker. Two weeks ago, the member for the entrance, entrance was incredibly deceitful on, to the Central Coast community when he said publicly, this is a departmental inquiry. So where was the government's represented during all this? He spent more time criticising council than he did supporting it. To mislead their constituents because they're making out as if this inquiry is going to be somehow exposing uh, what's going on into the council whilst at the same time putting the people that are responsible for this mess back in their jobs. The government is not satisfied because they don't control Central Coast Council, they want to turn it into an arm of government. Speaker, speak while the Minister for Local Government, and I respect the Minister, was absolutely blindsided what happened by what happened on the Central Coast, despite regular audits, I must say, by the Auditor General's office and the likes of PricewaterhouseCoopers, the, she needs the Premier's support. Today in this parliament, the Premier needs to step up and take power to call a judicial inquiry judicial to make sure inquiry? that those terms of reference are broad enough to dig deep into the 20 years of pain that we have been living through. And a new parliamentary uh, news, of course, the coronavirus and uh, the restrictions of Greater Sydney, which include the Central Coast, are up. We spoke with Parliamentary Secretary for the Central Coast, Adam Crouch, about the current situation. We are seeing, obviously, our increased restrictions at the moment for the next three days. This is about us keeping our community safe. We do not want to go backwards with regards to COVID-19. We should not become complacent about this virus. It is incredibly easily to con easy to, to communicate and to transfer. And so, you know, the government has made these tough decisions, but they are vital decisions. And I, I applaud the Central Coast community because what we have done in the last 12 months is keep our community safe, uh, literally eliminate community transmission, and we have to make sure we do the right thing. So while these are difficult things to do at the moment, it's a short-term uh, pain but for long-term gain to help keep our community safe so I would encourage everybody to follow those restrictions if they've got any questions at all they can also ring Service New South Wales on 13 77 88 to get that advice if there are concerns at all. New Council CEO David Farmer has got a tough test in front of him as he aims to see council return to a solid financial footing and now with almost a month into the job Farmer says he is determined to achieve in his role, setting out his key goals in an interview with CCN. 
if I said I had two strategic objectives, the first one is I really want to make this organisation one that the staff can be proud of. A guy came up to me at uh, Erin the Depot um, on Wednesday morning and said, what's your vision for the organisation? I said, you know, I really haven't thought about it enough. I've only been here for a little while. And, but if I was, you were really going to ask me, it's I'd like, he had a, his council uniform on, Central Coast Council on his shirt, and I said, I'd like you to be able to go to the supermarket and walk around there and be proud of the organisation you work for. Plenty of people, you know, they're proud of the job that they do because they, you know, they might mow the parks or, you know, keep the sewer system going, but I want you to be proud of the whole organisation you work for. So that's the first thing. And the second one is um, I really want to make the operations of council in the interest of the public in that I want it to be boring. I don't want it to be, you know, the, the centre of the news. I, I want the actions of the elected council when they make decisions and the policy decisions of the council to be the news, not um, council's finances or, or how the organisation is functioning. Today, the state government released the Tuggera Lakes Expert Panel's report into improving water quality in the popular lake system. The work is expected to inform the preparation of Council's Coastal Management Program for Tuggera Lakes, which will set its direction for the next 10 years. Environment Minister Matt Keane said the government would now go away and consider the 50 final recommendations as identified in the report. Look, I'm thrilled to be here today to release the expert panel's report into the uh, catchment area of the Tuggera Lakes. We know that this lake system is so important to the community, it's so important to the environment. It's loved by everyone, but it's being loved to death. The vision of what this site should be and how we're going to manage it now and with another 40,000 plus houses in the future is incredibly important. Now we spent a lot of time working with the community on that and there is a lot of uh, information in our report focused on, on what the vision should be based on information. But I also know as part of the coastal management program that council is now running, that's the key first step. The scoping study outlines what the vision should be and how everyone's going to get behind that. Look, there are three problems that we've identified. Firstly, these are shallow lakes. Secondly, there is a lot of nutrient going into the lake system. And thirdly, uh, we're not being able to flush it often enough. And that's seeing a, a result in poor water quality. So we know that uh, the stormwater, the sewerage overflows at times of rain is having a huge impact on the lake system. So one of the recommendations is upgrading infrastructure, including around stormwater runoff into to the lake system. Now over to sport with Hawk. Thanks Macy. Well the A-League is certainly heating up with only six points separating second place Central Coast Mariners from ninth place Wellington and Phoenix. For the Mariners this bodes trouble, especially if they cannot get back into winning ways after drawing yet again at Amy Park with Melbourne victory on Sunday. It was the team's top goal scorer Matt Simon who first launched the boys in yellow into the lead with a header too strong for the hands of Matthew Acton. A second half equaliser brought victory back into the game and the score remained level till the end. Although still holding on to second place, there are three teams below them with games in hand, meaning there is a chance the Mariners won't even make the final series. It all depends upon securing wins in their final six league matches, the next one being away against Brisbane Raw on Wednesday. Meanwhile, also on Sunday at Central Coast Stadium, New Zealand took on the North Queensland Callum boys in a very close encounter that went the way of the Warrior and scored 24-20. In the opening quarter, the Warriors got ahead with three unanswered tries and went to the half-time sheds ahead by 24 points to four. The Cowboys hit back hard in the second half with three tries while denying their hosts scoring any more points all game, but they fell in the end by four points. The next home game for the Warriors will be Sunday, May 16, against the Eels, with an away game against the Sea Eagles scheduled for this coming Sunday. Thanks, Hawk. This weekend looks like it will be great in comparison to the dreary, wet weather we've had throughout the week. Starting off in Gosford, it will be a lovely sunny day on Saturday, with tops of 25 and a low of 13 predicted. No rain is forecast, and there will be light winds throughout the day. On Sunday, it will be a slightly cooler, with temperatures reaching 22 and a low of 14. It will be a partly cloudy day, and there is a small chance of rain being forecast. Light winds are also expected. Moving now to the entrance, where it will be slightly cooler. Saturday will mostly be sunny, with a high of 22 and a low of 16. No rain and light winds are also forecast for the day. 
and Sunday will be partly cloudy with a slight chance of rain. The max will be 21 with a low of 17 and light winds are also expected. The week ahead will start with sunny weather and temps of mid 20s on Monday before dipping down to the high teens for the rest of the week. It also looks like we might be getting some more rain. Back to you, JC. Thanks, Harry. All of these stories and thousands more can be found on our website or in this week's Coast Community News, Coast Community Chronicle and Pelican Post. Subscribe to all of our socials and Spotify for updates during the week. And a new play is debuting at the Art House in Wyong tonight and it's called Rape and Other Acceptable Practices. The play will be showing at the Art House in Wyong tonight and tomorrow night and then it'll move on to Sydney and Canberra. We sat down with the writer Daniel Widdison and lead actor Claudia Schneer to find out more. We hope you enjoyed this week and we'll see you next week. I feel, I feel like sometimes we don't go places and we don't have conversations because we find a way out of it. So it'd be easy for me to say, oh, but I'm a man, I can't write about this. But, you know, I'm not apologetic for being a guy um, and I am a writer, so I, I wanted to write about this. Um, but in the writing process, it was like so many conversations that I were had with my, my friends, both male and female, who had, you know, experienced rape or sexual abuse and getting their opinions and, and, and hearing their stories of, um, you know, of the attack that, that they were unfortunate enough to be present in, um, their experiences of gaslighting. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, so I took all those ideas. I'm okay, well, this is, this is what's happened. Let me you know, step into that and create this world. The storyline essentially um, starts off with the main character, Maddie. She's very outgoing and like very trusting in people um, until red flags emerge. Uh, she meets someone along the way, um, just in a chance meeting, and then there is an attack. A very clear black and white situation. It was clearly non-consensual. It's about the repercussions for not only the victim, but also a witness to the crime as well. This play is about gaslighting. It's about our responsibility as a society. Our responsibilities as individuals and as a community as well. And this play provides more understanding around that area.